So you look at this wagon and the disrepair that it's been in, the abuse that it's taken in the last 25 years, there's a lot of challenges here. You can't run to AutoZone or Walmart and get parts. Uh, they just ain't gonna have them. Yeah, there's not a quick lube that you can pull under and somebody's gonna service it. So you've got a pattern here. You know, that's really the biggest thing. If something ain't in too bad a shape, we gotta use them measurements, that design, to get it back to where it'll fit on the chassis that's under the wagon to make everything match. And you get to looking at the wagon, there's a lot of little bolts. There's a lot of little nuts. There's a lot of holes that have to line up just perfectly for everything to come into place. The thing that probably worries me the most is, I'm gonna get it put back together and then the chug box will fit, you know, or it's something like that, some little thing. You can be off a quarter to a half inch somewhere out of square, it's gonna throw a kink in a lot of things. I just hope I remember what part goes to what place. But you know, this is a good one by 12, got some good grain in it. And I just use spray paint, sort of like a wet wash, I guess in a way, just give it a little coating. I'll show you how that grain pops out here in just a minute. But you can see, it looks sort of old and faded that away run across that grain, it looks pretty good. This is a Rust-Oleum, painter's choice it is, Satin Hunt Club Green. Yes, I never knew it had such a title, but hey, that's what it is, that's what we're using. As we go through this process, <clears throat> I have hindsight, I do, but also I see into the future. And what I wanna see in the future of this wagon getting restored, getting <clears throat> redone is to it to look better than it did, but maybe more back to its original colors and original origin, I guess I should say. Uh, you know, Studebaker was very proficient in what their colors were and the way they looked, and get back to some more old traditional wood. We're gonna go back with some old, not old, we're gonna go back with new oak that is on there. And I'm not talking like veneered oak underneath or a two before, I'm talking about a full two and a quarter inch thick by four inches wide, solid piece of oak. You know, you know that stuff is uh, a little hard to come by down here in our country, a little harder to work, but folks, that's what this wagon was made out of so many years ago, so let's put it back like it was. Floor is done. As far as screwing the floorboards down anyway, we're gonna sand them off, get them a good oil base coat of paint on there so they'll turn a little water. Got the braces for the water barrel in yesterday and on uh, this side where a box goes. Got the shims under the axles here where everything is good and level. Uh, so making progress, maybe it won't be but a day or two we can go to putting some sideboards on there and then we'll overhaul that chug box. The boards that were under here were actually just two by four, which is three and a half by inch and a half. These are a full inch and five eighths by four inches solid oak. So I know they're gonna give it a whole lot more support because that water barrel is really what started this deal to sagging many years ago because that's a lot of weight when you get 30 gallons of water in it. So we had to mill them down, run them back through the planer to get them the thickness we wanted to put on there. But then again, when you go to screwing through there, if you don't have a fine thread screw, you have to drill every hole or you're gonna twist the head off them screws. So there's a lot of stuff went back in it. Uh, a lot of you might notice we've got some cracks back in here in these floorboards. Now, if this was a traditional floorboard of a wagon, it'd be tongue and groove. We had a hard time finding any, and which we're never gonna put grain in here, so I want it to be able to breathe a little bit, so if it does rain in here, that water's got a way to get out, and it's not just standing on a tongue and groove floor. So I think this will last longer. Uh, we're gonna sand it, uh, see what happens, and Ken is getting ready to get it back together. Beep, 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 beep. What? We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to tell you what? Big news! The cowboy just got through shooting what? The ultimate cowboy showdown. Now, I know y'all like cowboy culture and you like to hear about what cowboys are doing, but we had such a great time. Traveled up to Wyoming, got to meet a dear friend of mine now, Trace Adkins, and we judged a food competition for this particular episode we did. Some of them guys, I don't never think had seen a Dutch oven. Some of them girls, they didn't either, but hey, it was all good cooking. We had a good time. Tune in, check your local listings because the Cowboys gonna be on there giving some advice to some folks who need to learn how to cook. Now that is a good cup of coffee. Well, me and Mage and Jason and Shan have got the new floor. 
Jason is my oldest son. Uh -huh. Shanna is the boss wife, and Mage is the what? Quality control of all parts. Mage, check this out for me, buddy. What do you think? Mage says, I done a good job, Dad. Done a good job. Let me help you down. There you go. Whoa! But I think y'all seen in the picture before, this was tongue and groove. Now, when we put this back in here, I allowed that since this wasn't going to haul grain no more, I was going to leave me a little air space. So I spaced each one of them out individually to where I could get a little air in the floor of this wagon. It's going to make it big. But the sideboards, oh my gosh, them things had to be so precise because they got this bolt. Well, really, I can show you on this one, this flat piece of strap that runs through here and goes through the bottom of the piece of this oak on here. So you'll bore that one through and then come back and then countersink that to where this is what holds it and then there's one at the front. Now you can see about the time we nearly got finished, everybody want to run out of the paint we was using, but we got some ordered up there for the front. The new seat, hang on a minute, I want to show you something here. I want to just bring this up here and show y'all what we was up against. I'll bring it to you so you can see it. Now. This seat was made out of ash many years ago, and you can see it has seen better days. It was tongue and groove. Jace, he got a planer and just joined that one together where we could put the seat, but this one looks a sight better than that one up there, Shan. It does. You mean vice versa? Yeah, or vice versa. This old box was on this side. I redid it this morning. It is solid oak. Put it on there to where you bevel the front of this to where it'll fit that slope. Come on down this way when it rains, water run off the box. We got the brake assembly on, on there and everything. We had to take up a few different links here and there. It didn't come out exactly as it was before we started. Like I say, put the seat all back together, but the brake is tight, works well. You put it on, you ain't gonna move the wagon, so that is a plus there. You know, this is what I'm really proud of because other than lean two and a half inches, it did. Look here at this bubble, Shan. It is what we call level-headed, it is. Uh, but you can see, if Shan will sort of get up here to where you can see these, there's two boards, one on the outside in here. They're mesquite, and these end boards just slide in. If you didn't have a chuck box in the other end, you'd just slide two boards in there and you could haul in there whatever you wanted. Pony Express come today, something I'm really excited for. Let's just go ahead and open this box and see what is in it. If we can get in the box, Shen. Uh. Oh my gosh, look here. It is a present. Must be jewelry. It's wrapped up really nice. Let's see what the... Oh, look at here, Shen. It is the coffee pot with the K in there. Ain't that pretty? Now that is some fine craftsmanship. Now, long time ago, if y'all remember, I think this was what you might have seen on our wagon. Red River Ranch. That's what it was always been. When we went to cook-offs, we went everywhere, that was it. Come here, I'll show you where it used to go. It used to fit exactly right there. But folks, we are proud to display this emblem that Hasty Bake is putting on all the new Berthas now. And it's probably gonna go right there. I think it looks really good up against that good Studebaker green. So it's something we're proud of. That's a logo that we've used on a lot of stuff. That's the pride that we take. This is made in the USA just like this. And hey, we are proud to be putting the wagon back together. When you get to this point, folks, it's something that we're like, hey, I'm getting close. And then I remember there's a lot to a chuck box. I want you to see here. I've took the top off this one already because I wanted to see what was going on here. And a lot of people will always ask me, well, how wide is your chuck box? Well, it measures today 38 and one quarter of an inch. I never measured this over here. You think it'll fit, Shin? We better find out. So we'll stick her up here. We have 38 and a quarter of an inch. So that is gonna be really close. Height-wise, here's what we're looking at, folks. About 40 and a half inches. Now you'll see here as this gets wide at Oh, 21 and a half, but it slopes down. In fact, let me open this chuck box lid so you can see. It slopes as it comes out there. That way you can have more storage down here. Let me just get her out here where y'all can see it. Have more storage in the bottom for your big stuff. And every old cook organized his chuck box the way he wanted it to be. Now, this one has served us great purpose. purpose. 
it's gonna be something that's really gonna be a show wagon to me and Shan because hey, this has been needing doing for how many years, Shan? Whew, long time it has, but hey, it's a great deal. There's a lot to a chuck box, sort of like building cabinets. And I used to build cabinets a long, long time ago. I about forgot how when I started this project I did. They were all tongue and groove pine and then went back with three quarter inch, just regular old plywood. And I'll guarantee you lumber was a lot cheaper when they built that one in the 90s than when I built this one right here. I went back with an oak veneer everywhere on the inside, went back with tongue and groove pine on the outside. But the inside, which will be the, the drawers and stuff, will go back with a solid oak piece of front on them, probably a black cabinet knob. And this will be sort of a honey oak, sort of a lighter color to where it'll contrast just a little. Uh, but hey, that solid oak ain't gonna go nowhere. It will light way a little bit more than it did when I took it out there, but I got good help. I got Major, see? What do you think, Mage? Mage says, I think it'll work, Dad. I really do. Y'all ready to see it? Well, done deal it is. I figured up man hours the other day. If you'd have just been working on this constant with not having to do anything else at all, they was 52 hours in, if you'd have just been straight solid. You know, we sure patterned this chuck box after the old one when we pulled it out because I had to have some kind of guide and you sort of design it as to how you want it. Um, and I got to thinking going back, you know, it's gotta be nearly tongue and groove to make it look right, sort of like the old one that fits together to where there's really no pieces being seen there and get a good joint. And that stuff's a little harder to find than I thought it was. I was looking for tongue and groove, some really good oak. Uh, never did find that. So finally went back with some pine. That's pretty good. Uh, but the chuck box is all oak. It's not pine anymore. Uh, we decided to change all that up to where we could get a good hardwood and match it throughout the rest. So me and Shan got to looking and we found these old antique ones that look pretty good. Got a little copper in there, a little bronze. And uh, going through two good solid pieces of oak here for a drawer front, they're not gonna pull out because them wooden ones so many times stripped the threads out. You couldn't get it open no more. But we just used to have, like I say, this was all open, but now these drawers are two individual sizes to where we can put uh, serving utensils and tongs and stuff up there, but keep laundry in this one. Still like putting the sheet metal on here. My good friend Jesse will get on that next week. All wagons didn't have a boot. Some did, some didn't. And you might think in a boot, well, it's not something you wear. It's something where you store pots and pans. And I'm gonna have to give a big tip of my hat to my oldest son, Jason, who, uh, got a good planer and he helped me a lot with this on the stuff that took this off and he took this box home and, and um, just redone it off the old one as a pattern and went back in there so it'll hold oh mostly bean pots maybe some dutch ovens in there but hey it's good to see it match the rest of it and i'll tell you a little funny deal when we tried to match this pine stain to the oak stain me and Shan ended up mixing five different kinds of stain together and staining little boards for a long time to get it where it come out like this. But it's a pretty good contrast from the oak to the pine that's on here. So, hey, we think it looks great. Now, when you come down them sideboards and that's all the oil-based paint that's been washed out and wiped on there pretty, you know, lightly because we wanted to bring out the grain in the wood to match some of that old Studebaker color that was there so many long ago. And you can see these bows, which are usually made out of ash, most of the time uh, are stained to match this. You know, they, they're a good hardwood, so they're gonna stain different, pretty similar to the color of the wheels. Now we get over to the water barrel and that other one had cracked in half right here with this plate that it sets on uh, for so many years and I'd braced it and everything else and went back. But we come back instead of under here, if you can see from Sadie, there's three boards under here. Uh, they were all pine before. Now they're a piece of full two by four inch pieces of oak, which is gonna give us more strength. It's gonna last longer. Over on what I would call the driver's side of the box, and I always sit on the right side, there's a box back halfway through the middle there. Now the one we had before was made out of pine. Went back with this in all solid oak. It's where we keep hammers. Uh, we'll keep lantern hangers in there. Sometimes trash bag stuff like that. It's just sort of a catch-all, but it's pretty long. It'll hold a lot of stuff. And you move on up to the front of the wagon, there's a 
there's a box up there that gets a lot of weight put on it. Now it comes out where the floorboards come out there and it sets on a ledge about like so. Uh, that box holds all the stakes for the fly. And let me tell you folks, when you get them all in there is heavy. Now, when you put something together like this, you look forward to it in a way, but then it's a little bit scary at times because you're thinking, mm, I just don't know. I think of the thing that I was proudest about when I finally got it all took apart was I actually remembered how to put it back together because there's a lot of stuff that goes in there. But I think proudest I was is when, when I got that chuck box redone, this one, and I went to slip it in the back just the way it looked when it fit in there on them brand new painted floorboards that's in there on that wagon and you just slide it in there and to shut that door and you think about all the times that I open and shut that old one on the thousands of miles that is being up and down the highways, uh, acres upon acres of country that it's set and fed cowboys. And it's a uh, it, it's pretty, pretty great feeling to know that me and this wagon and Shan have been a lot of places, but y'all have also led us in your living room. And uh, that's a thing that means a lot to us. And we're proud to have you as viewers. We hope that you enjoyed um, a little bit about what it takes to do all this. And this is our heritage. Uh, folks, it's fixing to roll back at you. Uh, we're gonna try to do, do more and more with this wagon to where you can see it. But hey, proud to have you one and all. Uh, we just thank you so much for watching. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag of flying. And this old wagon will display it proudly at will because it is a great honor. For the rest of you, like I say, we thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you for taking time out of your day to do that. Be sure and remember to share and like the videos with your friends and neighbors and let them know, hey, that guy's not only a cook, he's a pretty good carpenter if he can get all that back together. I ain't got no food to offer you, but I will do a happy, 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 happy dance because woo -wee, I am so happy it's done. God bless you each and every one and we'll see you down. I'm going to redo the wagon trail.